Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life. I'm Dr. Cindy Wang, a board certified pathologist. And today I would like to start on my first part of my mini series on how to apply for pathology residency. And uh, at least this very first part should be applicable to all med students who are applying for residency this year for the 2021-2022 ERAS cycle. Because since ERAS is a common application, a lot of what I'm about to say you can apply for any residency program application. Today I will be talking about the ERAS application and the timeline and a little bit about how to and the little intricacies that you need to remember while you're applying for residency. ERAS opens in June and when it opens you'll be able to around the same time get a token from your medical school that allows you to go onto the ERAS website so you can register for an ERAS account and start filling in the application. Just because the ERAS application opens in June doesn't mean you need to get it ready in June. You actually have all fall to prepare your application. The first day you can possibly submit your application is September 1st. And even then on September 1st, you don't have to certify and submit your application. That's just the first possible day. The residency programs actually aren't able to look at your application until September 29th. So any application that is submitted before September 29th will have a date of submission of September 29th because that's when the first day programs can look at it. So you have basically up until the 29th of September to make sure your application is completely ready because once you are done, it would be very difficult to go back and to change anything or add anything or take something away from your application. So make sure to double, triple, quadruple, however many checks you need to make sure your application, there's no typos, nothing that is missing or needs to be added. After the 29th, the programs will have access to your application and the interview invites will be on a rolling basis. This is why at the very minimum, get your application submitted by the 29th because every day that's later than the 29th, that is one day that the programs can't look at your application and give you an invite. And then the interview process will go all the way through most of the time end of December into early January and come February is the time for you to make your rank list. So March 14th of 2022 is the beginning of uh, match week and everyone will find out where they've matched to around noon of the 18th. And that's basically it for the ERAS cycle. The official end date for the 21-2022 ERAS cycle is in May, but for most people, it kind of just, that's it. Come March 18th of 2022, that is the last day of ERAS because you will find out where you've matched. All right, so given that's the timeline, there's a few things to keep in mind. Before that September deadline of um, having programs available to have access to your application, you wanna make sure you've scheduled and taken step two before September. That way your report will be ready when programs have access to your application. Programs will start looking at your application without the score, but you know some programs will want to see the score before they send out uh, invitation invites. Another thing to keep in mind before that September 29th deadline is that make sure your letter writers know that they have to write you a letter and they know how to upload your letters to the ERAS program. And you need to gently remind them <laughs> that they need to get the letters in before the 29th because most programs won't send interview invites without the letters of recommendation because that's one of the biggest components of the whole application. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're filling out your ERAS application is how many programs that you want to apply to or need to apply to if your scores wasn't that great or basically how many you could afford to apply to. Unfortunately, the ERAS does have a fee and only covers the first 10 programs you apply to. So for example, your first 10 will be free with the ERAS fee of $99. After your 10th residency program you apply to, your 11th program will cost you $17 and your 12th program will cost you $17 and so forth until your 
20th program. Each program you apply to from 11 to 20 each costs you 17 more dollars. If you want to apply more than 20 programs starting from your 21st to your 30th program you apply to, each of those programs are $21 each. And then if you need to apply to more than 30 programs, each additional program starting from number 31 is $26 each. So if you are someone who only wanted to apply to a minimum programs, $99 is all you need. But if you're someone who wants to apply very broadly, you'll have to pay the 99 plus the tiered levels of application fee for each individual program past number 11. It does add up very quickly. So that's something you also need to take into account when you're picking your number of programs. Other parts of your uh, application is you will also need a portrait photo of you, basically something from the shoulder neck up. And this is a, a picture that goes with your application that every program sees. Medical school programs generally know that this is a requirement and they'll set up a portrait day for their seniors where they'll take the one professional picture for the ERAS application and then they'll also do your senior portraits. So they, that could go in the yearbook, you know, with your cap and your fake gown on. So if you are in a US medical school, I don't think that's a huge worry. But in case your program doesn't do it, I will recommend going to somewhere that um, does like professional, maybe probably professional portraits where like maybe where you would go to get your passport taken done. Because this picture does go to all the programs. And this is also the same picture you probably can reuse if you want to apply for anything else in the future, like fellowship applications, they will also ask for a picture and you know, you could reuse that picture. So my recommended deadline for absolute latest submission of your application is September 29th. But make sure you start filling it out before then because the ERAS application is very long. You need to basically individually fill in everything from the beginning, including everything that's on your CV. If you had a nice concise CV made up, the ERAS application is going to make you go individually fill out those in their own like little text box. So for example, if they're going to be like, oh, what was your research experience? Even though it's all on your CV, nice and listed, they're going to make you go use their system and retype in what you did when you did and whatever. So it is a long time. It does take several hours. And this is also where you could have like typos or miscopying, pasting things. So this is why I also mentioned you should really, really double, triple, quadruple, whatever number of checks you need to make sure everything in there is correct. That's everything to do before the 29th. And after the 29th, and when the interview invites come, it's also a first comes first serve. And unfortunately, because of COVID this year, the interview for residency is also still going to be on Zoom. So you're not able to go to the programs and visit the facilities and tour and meet all the residents and faculty in person. Once the dates are released to the program's first picks up interviewees, they'll send you a list of dates that are available. If there's an interview date that you really want, then make sure to respond relatively fast or they might get filled up and then you have to take a different interview day. Historically in the past, this is more important because you know, for in those interviews, we used to have to be able to fly there or travel there, you know, and get hotel and lodging. So you also need to make sure that you know, it's it's sometimes going on one interview can take two or three days to process because of the, the amount of traveling and the time change. Um, so it used to be more important to get the exact day you want because you also need to coordinate with your medical school to make sure that they'll excuse you for that day for you to go on interviews. But now since everything's over Zoom, I imagine that is not as important. But in terms of interview dates, I would definitely recommend that you do not pick your number one um, program that you really dream of going to as your first interview because most people see their first interview as sort of the practice interview. Unless you're really great at interviewing, um, interviewing for your first place might not be make the best impression because you're still like new to the whole thing. Um, what's been recommended is that you schedule your interview for the program that you really, really want to into maybe your like four, five, six, no more than your like say 10th interview because usually after a while you get interview fatigue. 
Other things to keep in mind for your interviews, since this time everything's over Zoom, so you want to make sure you have a room that is nice and quiet. If it's your bedroom, make sure you know it looks professional in the background. If you could find a room within your medical school that you could reserve for the day, that's also a good choice. What I would recommend is on your interview day, also try to you know wear wear professional clothes on top and below. I know over Zoom everyone only sees kind of chest up, but like I have I've never personally experienced this, but I have heard that it's fair game for some programs to ask you to stand up to make sure you know you're not just like lounging around in your boxers. But the point is like make sure you're fully dressed and professional. You're in a very nice, clean, professional environment. That way you don't feel like too comfortable or chillaxed that you sound kind of off-putting on your interview as well. And if you are listening to this video in the future when COVID is no longer a thing and interviews are back in person, I would recommend that you schedule your interviews in the sense you keep in mind how much interviews will cost you uh, it, because you have to take account flights or the, tr the car drive, the gas, the hotels, food, and other things that it takes to go to each program to do the interview. Um, some programs will give you housing um, as necessary. Most of the Big city programs won't give you housing, but if you go to a smaller Midwest kind of setting, they're definitely always going to offer you hotel for the night. And uh, a tip I would give is while you're interviewing, make start making your rank list. If you wait to make your rank list when the rank list opens on the NRMP site, it might be like a month or two since your some of your interviews and you might not remember the programs as well so if you make your rank list as you interview and change the list you know fluidly as you interview then you'll have a better idea at least of programs you did like at the moment and once the rank list opens on the nrmp website you'll start listing your programs from number one to number whatever based on the number of interviews you went to if you didn't go to an interview uh, and you didn't get invited to a place, even if you apply to it, you cannot rank them. You can only rank the programs you've interviewed at. So if you only only interviewed at one place, well then you, you don't have much of a choice. That one place you interviewed at is your number one choice. If you interviewed at 30 places, you could rank all 30 or you could only rank the top or only rank like one through 25. If there was five programs, you're like, oh no, I can never go there. So uh, the more places you interview, the more options you have. Other things that historically is done in the past, usually in January and February, people will go on second looks uh, at their programs. That way they will be able to see the program better, meet more of the residents and um, get a better feel if they wanna go there. And also it shows the program that you have real interest in them because you're spending your time um, to go out to their program and relook at it. Unfortunately, I think because of COVID and since they're not inviting anyone to site, you probably won't be able to do second looks this time or this cycle. In the future, post COVID era, I feel like that will probably be coming back and something that you should definitely use if you're having trouble deciding where you wanna rank as your number one or number two program. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is Come March 14th, you will find out on that Monday if you have matched somewhere or not. They won't tell you where you matched to. If you did, they would just say, congratulations, you have matched into a program. Or they'll send you, you know, like, unfortunately, you did not match to a program. And on that Monday will be the start of SOAP if you did not match. And SOAP is a week-long scramble process where you, if you did not match, will be given a list of places that are also unmatched. And then you will be able to individually apply to those spots do quick interviews and then do a quick like you know mini rank list of those interviews and then you will find out on Friday the 18th along with everyone else it, where you're going to go for residency and match day is super exciting and it's always even for us even for the people in like already in residency slash attendings we're all very excited for match day because we're like oh who are we getting next year and i hope you know like we're all hoping that it's someone we like you know not only are you excited to get matched to your top program we're also excited to have matched our top picks as well okay so that's really it for today that's the timeline and how to apply for your eras application uh thank you for being here so Supporting my channel, please like and subscribe, and I'll see everyone later. Bye!